It's The Real News Network, and I'm Greg Wilpert in Baltimore. Austria's government collapsed after a mere 17 months in office due to a no-confidence vote and a political scandal involving the far-right FPÖ party. This was the first time that a vote of no confidence took down a chancellor since World War II. Chancellor Sebastian Kurz resigned, and a temporary chancellor, Brigitte Bierlein, will be the first female chancellor in Austria's history until new elections are held, probably in sept September. Austrian President Alexander Van der Bellen introduced the temporary chancellor as follows. Today, I am pleased to introduce to you a figure who, as the newspaper wrote, was the first president of the Constitutional Court, and she will again be the first, particularly the first female chancellor of the Republic of Austria. I am pleased, ladies and gentlemen, to be able to introduce Miss President Brigitte Bierlein. She is the sitting president of the Austrian Constitutional Court and will be named Chancellor of the Republic of Austria by me within days. The crisis began when Vice Chancellor Heinz Christian Strache, who is also the leader of the far right FPÖ, or Austrian Freedom Party, was caught on camera on the resort island of Ibiza, offering a woman who he believed was the niece of a Russian billionaire government contracts in exchange for manipulating Austria's media to support his party. Without the FPÖ, the ruling party, FAP, no longer has a governing majority in the legislature. To discuss the scandal and its ramifications, I'm joined now by Walter Bayer. Walter is an Austrian economist and coordinator of the network Transform Europe, which is a network of 34 European political organizations from 22 countries and is the political foundation of the European left. Thanks for joining us today, Walter. Hi, thank you for having me. So what is your understanding of what happened in Ibiza? Uh, why is it a scandal and how do you think it will affect the voters of the FPÖ party? Well, you explained uh, perfectly what happened. That was a footage showing uh, Mr. Strache, the leader of the Freiheitliche Partei and Vice Chancellor, uh, in discussing with a lady who he did not know uh, so far about uh, how she could uh, um, support the party uh, through uh, buying a big Austrian tabloid and what he would do for her uh, in order to enhance her economic interests uh, in Austria. And that was a, a tremendous proof of corruption and a readiness to sell out uh, the country to uh, a Russian oligarch. Uh, but uh, I must uh, disappoint you in uh, a certain extent since uh, the European elections, which took place one week later, uh, gave uh, only a loss of 2.2% to the Freiheitliche Partei. So it seems uh, that the core of the voters of the Freiheitliche Partei uh, did not care much about the scandal and even uh, voted H.C. Strache uh, with pref preferential vote uh, to the European Parliament. So things are still very complicated in Austria. Now, as you mentioned, so they did very well in the European parliamentary elections, despite the scandal, the FPÖ, the far-right FPÖ. Now, um, what does that mean? I mean, uh, you said that they don't uh, clearly didn't care about the scandal, but why is that? I mean, what's going on? Is it that immigration issues or the other issues that the FPÖ deals with are so much more important for them? Well, it, it, it's necessary to understand what the Freiheitliche Partei actually is. It is a very traditional party, deeply rooted in the Austrian elites, which throughout the whole 20th century uh, were split between uh, a German nationalist current, which is represented uh, by the Freiheitliche Partei, and the conservative, if you could say so, uh, orientated or connected with uh, Austrian capital. And that means that this party is structurally uh, rooted in the Austrian society. And the second element is that uh, despite the scandal, it still disposes of a huge uh, media impact 
uh, it possesses uh, own media outlets and that gives them uh, resilience. Uh, I mean, maybe this is similar to the Trump phenomenon that uh, whatever this guy does and whatever these guys in Austria do, there is a part of the society which uh, is uh, disenchanted and disconnected uh, from the traditional uh, political and communicative system that's uh, even like a church, you could say. And why is that? I mean, what is going on in Austria at the moment that is uh, uh, that is providing so many voters for uh, the FPÖ at a time when um, they're clearly involved in a scandal like this? I mean, uh, what is happening? What is this disconnect about? Tell us more about that. Well, it, it, that what we experience in Austria, but not only in Austria in uh, whole Europe is a crisis of the political systems. The former uh, popular parties, the Social Democrats and, uh, and the Conservatives uh, broke the promise uh, of uh, maintaining uh, social security, uh, high living standards, uh, at least for the middle classes. And those parts of the middle classes classes which feel disappointed, disenchanted, disconnected from the political system, tend to vote for the far right unless uh, a, a real uh, left-orientated radical left alternative exists, as it is the case in Greece or in Portugal. But in those countries where strong and influential uh, left parties do not exist, uh, the protest is channeled uh, through a nationalist and uh, radical, and in many cases, as it is in Austria, uh, by neo-fascist parties. Now, when we spoke to you last time, it was back in 2016, when the presidential election between FPÖ candidate Norbert Hofer and Green candidate Alexander van der Bellen took place. Van der Bellen ultimately won the election. Has he, as head of state, but not of the government, been able to do anything since then to slow down the rise of the far right in Austria? Well, he played an excellent role during uh, this governmental crisis of the of the last weeks in insisting uh, on the constitutional rules. Actually, he dismissed the Minister of Interior, who is an outspoken racist, neo-fascist, a very nasty, uh, xenophobic, racist person. And by doing that, um, uh, spoiled the uh, governmental coalition because at the beginning, at the outset, uh, when the footage from Ibiza uh, was uh, released through um, uh, German and Austrian uh, mass media, uh, the ÖVP, the Conservatives and the Freiheitliche Partei uh, tried to maintain the coalition only when they uh, uh, only as they understood that Van der Bellen is not willing uh, to, conf to approve uh, a government, including uh, this uh, very bad Minister of Interior, uh, the governmental coalition uh, split, and that introduced then the fall even of Chancellor Sebastian Kurz. Okay, well, we're going to leave it there for now. I'm speaking to Walter Bayer, coordinator of the network Transform Europe. Thanks again, Walter, for having joined us today. Yeah, thank you very much. Have a nice day. Bye-bye. And thank you for joining the Real News Network.